Low Science Fam, double replacement worksheet number two is in full effect. Let's take a look here. It's going to be a double replacement because we have two compounds, sodium nitrate and calcium iodide, both aqueous coming together. So if we mix them together, there is a chance that calcium and sodium are going to swap places. So let's look and see uh, what the potential products will be. So if calcium and sodium switch, calcium is now going to be with nitrate. So we can write that as calcium nitrate. Now I don't know exactly if calcium nitrate will be aqueous or solid, so I'm gonna leave that parentheses blank. But besides that, the other thing that's going to be created now is sodium with iodide. So these are going to be my two products. Now with the same thing, I'm gonna leave sodium iodides parentheses blank because I don't quite know yet if it's solid or aqueous. So let's take a look at calcium when it comes together with nitrate. Calcium and nitrate, you get the letter S. If you remember, S stands for soluble, which means aqueous. So this is going to be aqueous. Let's we look at the next one, sodium and iodide. When they come together, looks like the letter S as well, which means again, aqueous. All right, so if we started with aqueous and we end both products with aqueous, <clears throat> excuse me, not a lot is gonna happen. We're not gonna see any new solids or that. So we can say that no reaction happens. Why? Because there's no solid that's formed. It would just be two beakers, with fairly clear liquid mixing together and it would look the same afterwards. We really wouldn't notice any reaction. If we look at number two for a double replacement, compound and a compound both aqueous so potentially there's going to be a swap in the cations so now sodium would no longer would be with phosphate but the new product would be sodium sulfate i'm going to leave that blank parentheses because i don't know if it's going to be aqueous or not but iron 2 is now going to be with phosphate so iron 2 and phosphate I'm going to leave the parentheses blank on that one as well and check now with my solubility chart. So first up for that new compound is sodium and sulfate. If I put those together, it looks like it's going to be S. S on the chart stands for soluble, which means aqueous. So our first compound, AQ, is going to be aqueous. Well, let's look at iron 2-phosphate then. Iron 2 is right here. Phosphates right here. Let's see where they intersect. And there you go. The letter I. I stands for insoluble, which means solid. So this is going to be our new compound. Iron 2 phosphate is going to be it. All right, so let's work towards that then. How do we do that? Well, we first have to write out and figure out how to write each of these compounds out as an ionic compound. So let me start by just the notes. If I've got iron 2 sulfate, iron's 2 plus, according to the chart up above, sulfate is 2 minus. Next up is sodium phosphate. Sodium, according to the chart, is plus 1. Phosphate, according to the chart, is PO4 and has a negative 3 charge. All right. After that, we have sodium sulfate next. Sodium has a plus 1 charge and sulfate has a 2 minus charge. And then last but not least, iron 2 phosphate. Iron 2, we know, means that it has a 2 plus charge. And phosphate, which is PO4, has a 3 minus charge. Now that we have our notes worked out, we can finally put our compounds together. 2 plus and 2 minus are going to cancel out. So iron 2 sulfate is just going to be FeSO4. And we're going to keep the AQ there for aqueous. Up next, sodium's plus one, phosphate's minus three. So we're going to need three sodiums in order to cancel out with that one phosphate. Remember that that is aqueous as well. Next up is the sodium and the sulfate. Sodium's plus one, sulfate's two minus. So I'm going to need two sodiums to cancel out with the sulfate. And we found from the solubility chart that that's aqueous. And last but not least, we have iron 2 with phosphate. In order to get those both equaled out to zero with their charges, plus 2 and minus 3, 
we need to make positive 6 and negative 6. So to get the positive 6, we're going to need 3 irons. And to get to negative 6, I'm going to take that whole phosphate. I'm going to need 2 of them. But now that I have that, they balance out to 0, and I've got my solid. Now that I have my compound written out, we know the drill. We just need to balance this out. 1 sulfate, 1 sulfate. Ooh, I've got three sodiums and two sodiums. So it looks like I'm going to need to make those both six. So let me start by doing that. Two and a three there. That now makes two phosphates, which I already have, so I'm good. But the three here makes three sulfates. So it looks like I'm going to need a three in front of that sulfate. But that's going to make three irons, which I already have. So ooh, I'm going to double check, but I feel like this might already be balanced now. So I've got three irons, three irons, three sulfates, three sulfates, six sodiums, six sodiums, two phosphates, two phosphates. Excellent. I'm balanced out, and now my double replacement reaction is all set. Remember that last solid right there. That's the thing after we mix these two aqueous solutions together. That's the thing we would notice coming out of solution. Number three has potassium hydroxide and sodium carbonate. If we take a look, sodium and potassium would switch spots. So sodium would no longer be with carbonate, but now would be with hydroxide. And now potassium would be with carbonate. The question is, will either of these compounds end up being solid or will they both be aqueous? We need one to be solid in order for the double replacement reaction to occur. So let's start with sodium hydroxide. Sodium's right here, hydroxide's right here. Let's figure out where they intersect and the letter S is there. Letter S stands for soluble which is aqueous. So we know that sodium hydroxide is aqueous. Let's look at potassium carbonate. Potassium's right here, carbonate's right here. Trace that, and oh, that one is S as well. S stands for soluble, which means aqueous. So both of these ended up being aqueous, which means there's no new product or solid that we would find when we mix them together, which means no reaction. Remember, RxN is just short in the lazy way of writing reaction. Okay, no go there for number three. On to number four. Take a look at number four. We have potential double replacement. So let's switch our ammonium and mercury around. So it looks like ammonium is not going to be with chromate anymore, but with chloride. And also, mercury 2 is now going to be with chromate. So we've got mercury 2, chromate. So these will be our two new compounds. But remember, we have to check and see if either of them will become solid so we know if there's actually a reaction. So let's look at ammonium, ammonium chloride. Ammonium's right here. Chloride's right here. They end up making an S, which means it's soluble, so it's aqueous. So ammonium chloride's aqueous. Well, let's look at mercury 2 chromate. Here's my mercury 2. Here's my chromate. Bring those down, connected, and I. I stands for insoluble, which means solid. So yes, we are going to have a reaction here because mercury 2 chromate is going to be our actual compound that forms as a product. All right, so let's start working out our notes here. First up, mercury 2 and chloride. Mercury is Hg with a 2 plus. Chloride is minus 1. Next up is ammonium chromate. Ammonium is NH4 with a plus one charge. Chromate is CrO4, and that has a two minus charge. We can then have ammonium chloride next. Ammonium is NH4 with a plus one charge. Chloride is a minus one. And then we have mercury 2 chromate. Mercury is 2 plus, as we wrote earlier. And chromate is CrO4 with a 2 minus. Now that we have our notes, 
we can start putting these together and actually making the compounds. Mercury is 2 plus, so that means you're going to need two chloride ions to balance that out so that this ionic compound has no charge. Next up, ammonium has plus one, chromate has minus two. So I'm going to need to take this whole ammonium, I'm gonna need two of them in order to balance out with the one chromate. That is aqueous. Next up, plus one, minus one, those work out nice. Ammonium and chloride balance out, and we already figured out that that is aqueous. And then last but not least, we have mercury. Mercury is two plus, chromate's minus two. So these two just come together one to one. Don't forget to put the S for solid. That proves that this reaction actually is gonna happen. And now all we need to do is balance this out. It looks like we have one chromate and one chromate. Okay, two chloride ions, let me put a two here, and that'll give me two ammoniums, one mercury, one mercury. It looks like we are balanced with a one, one, two, one. All right, it looks like number four is done. Nice work. Checking out number five, lead two, bromide and aluminum iodide. Lead and aluminum might switch. So that means aluminum might no longer be with iodide, but instead be with bromide. So the new compound would be aluminum bromide, but also now lead two would be with iodide. Lead two iodide. And if you recall from class demos and that, I believe lead two iodide is that bright yellow compound. So I have a feeling this reaction is gonna work, but let's double check. I've got aluminum and bromide coming together. That's a capital S, that stands for aqueous. So we know that aluminum bromide is going to be aqueous, so we won't really notice that in the reaction. Next up is lead two with iodide. Bring those together and you've got an I. I stands for insoluble, which means that it will be a solid. Now that we have that, we know this is going to be a double replacement reaction because there is a solid forming. So let's get our notes down so we know the charges on how to put these together. So lead 2 means it's going to be a 2 plus charge. Bromide is a minus 1 charge. Aluminum is next. Aluminum is plus 3 and iodide is minus 1. After that we have aluminum bromide. So aluminum is plus 3. Bromine is minus 1. And finally, we've got lead to iodide. Lead is two plus, iodide is minus one. Remember, all those charges are just found on this chart. So if you're curious, like, hey, where did those charges come from? Just look on the solubility chart or your ion reference sheet. All right, positive two minus one. That means for every one lead, we are going to have two bromines. And we know that that is aqueous to start. Next up, Aluminum is 3 plus, iodide is minus 1. So I'm going to need 3 iodides to make negative 3 in order to cancel out with that positive 3 aluminum. Next up, 3 plus aluminum minus 1 bromide. That means I've got aluminum by itself, and you're going to need 3 bromines to balance that out. We know aluminum bromide is aqueous. And then last is lead to iodide. Lead is 2 plus, iodide is minus 1, so that means for one lead, I'm going to need two iodides, and we know that that is solid. Now that we have that, let's just balance this out. One lead, one lead. Ooh, two bromides, three bromides. So two and three, we're going to need to make them both six so they can be equal. So I'm going to drop a three here if I can. I might be running out of room. There we go. There's a three. That'll make six bromides and I'll put a two there. Now by doing that, that made three leads. So I'm going to put a three here, but that'll make six iodides. So I'll put a two here. Man, that was a lot. But I think now they're all balanced. Three leads, three leads, six bromides, two times three is six bromides. Two aluminum, two aluminum, 
And 2 times 3 is 6 iodides. 3 times 2 is 6 iodides. All right, we're all balanced. 3, 2, 2, 3. Awesome. On to number 6. Looking at question number 6, we've got magnesium phosphate reacting with potassium sulfate. We know that potassium and magnesium potentially could switch spots. So that means potassium is now going to leave sulfate potentially and combine with phosphate. So we'll call that potassium phosphate. But also in the double replacement reaction, we know that magnesium is going to jump over and combine with sulfate. So we're going to write that out as magnesium sulfate. Now that we have magnesium sulfate and potassium phosphate, we need to double check to see if these guys become aqueous or are solid. So let's look at potassium. Potassium's right here. Phosphate, right there. Let's take a look at where these guys overlap, and it becomes an S. S stands for soluble, which means aqueous, which means that it can dissolve in water. So that's not going to form anything new that we're going to notice. Let's look at magnesium sulfate. So let's bring that down. And this one is an S as well. Wow, okay. So this one also would form an aqueous compound. So if they're both aqueous, that means that no new solid is formed. So we're going to say no reaction on this one. I guess we'll move on to number seven then. Hello, here is number seven. We've got lead to acetate with copper to nitrate. Copper and lead potentially can switch. So that means that copper two is no longer going to be with nitrate, but now is going to potentially combine with acetate. We'll see in a little bit if that actually makes an aqueous compound. We also know now that lead, lead two is going to jump over to nitrate. So we're gonna make a new compound called lead to nitrate. Well, let's take a look on our solubility chart to see if copper two acetate actually is going to form a solid or aqueous compound. So we've got copper two, we've got acetate. That makes an S on the chart, which means it's aqueous. There we go, aqueous. Lead two, lead is a two plus charge. Nitrates minus one, ends up with an S. S stands for soluble which means aqueous. So look again. These both make aqueous compounds, which means there's no double replacement reaction here. So we are clear. We can just write no reaction. If we mix these two beakers together, nothing would really show up. Everything would just stay aqueous. Nothing big there. All right, we'll move on to the last one, number eight. Number eight, feeling great. We've got aluminum sulfate and silver nitrate. Silver and aluminum may potentially switch, which means that Silver, instead of being with nitrate, may link up with sulfate. If that's the case, it may be aqueous, may be solid, I don't know. We'll take a look at that. But now also aluminum is going to potentially meet up with nitrate. And we don't know if that's a solid or aqueous, but we'll figure that out. So let's look at the solubility chart. Silver sulfate. Here's silver. Here's sulfate. Let's read our chart and bingo. We got an I. I stands for insoluble, which means that it's a solid. I'm assuming aluminum nitrate then most likely is going to be aqueous. And yes, it's an S. S stands for soluble, which means it will dissolve, which means it's aqueous. Well, that means it's time to go to work then. Let's look at the charges. Aluminum's charge is plus three. Sulfate overall is a two minus charge. Silver nitrate, silver is plus one. Nitrate is NO3 with a negative one charge. After that, we've got silver sulfate. So silver plus one, sulfate, two minus charge. And then aluminum nitrate is last. Three plus for aluminum. Nitrate is NO3. Remember, that's stuck together as one with overall negative one charge. Now that we have that, we can look and put these guys together. 
Aluminum is three plus, sulfate's two minus. So that means we're gonna need to make them both six. So if I put two aluminums, that's gonna be positive six. And since sulfate is minus two, if I put three of them, that'll be negative six. So that's how I'm gonna put those together to make that ionic compound. Silver and nitrate, nice and easy. They're both plus one and minus one, so they come together, just one and one. Now for my products, silver is plus one, sulfate's minus two. So that means I'm going to need two silvers for every one sulfate. And remember, the silver sulfate is going to be the solid. Say that three times, silver sulfate solid. A lot of alliteration there. And aluminum for the last one, aluminum nitrate, aluminum's plus three, nitrate's minus one. So that means this nitrate, which stays together as a whole, I'm gonna need three of them in order to balance out with the aluminum, and that's aqueous. So now that we have our equation, let's just balance this out. It looks like I've got two aluminum over here, so let me put a two aluminum there. That's going to give me 2 times 3 nitrate, which is 6 nitrates. So I'll put a 6 over here for 6 nitrates. That also gives me 6 silvers. I've got 2 silvers over here, so if I put a 3, 3 will give me 6 silvers, because 3 times 2. But that'll give me 3 sulfates. Ooh, I have 3 sulfates. Good. I have a feeling this is balanced now. Let me just double check everything. 2 aluminum. 2 times 1 is 2 aluminum. Three sulfates, three times one, three sulfates. Six silvers, three times two is six silvers. Six nitrates, two times three is six nitrates. All right, we got it all balanced out. Our double replacement worked out. And you could always throw a one in that first spot if you wanted to make sure that everything had a number. But otherwise, we are complete. That ends up double replacement reaction worksheet number two. Let me know if you have any questions, but nice job, science fam.